Well, not, uh, now let's prove the chain rule. Uh, proof will be definitely different than something that you might have seen on high school. We will use linear approximations. Um, so suppose g prime a and f prime g of a exist. And we're going to show that f through g prime a equals the product of the two respective derivatives. So write as a function u is g of x and y is f of u. Then we see that y equals f u equals f of g x. So y is a composite function of f and g. So now what happens? So we take some arbitrary x. Well, not quite arbitrary. We change x, the x value from a to a plus delta x. Yeah, and such that delta x is chosen that we stay in a domain of g. Well, this can be done since we assume that g of prime of a exists. So we're going to measure the change in g value. And the change in g value equals delta u. Well, recall the stuff that we've been doing with the epsilon function. So now we get the change along the tangent line through a g a which is g prime a times delta x, plus a function e g, delta x times delta x. Now this is the epsilon function we defined in a former clip. So this equals g prime of a plus e g delta x times delta x. Now we can take out the common factor delta x. And we get the following expression. Yeah, and recall that, well, this eg was a very special function since when delta x is small and gets smaller and smaller and we take it close to zero, we take a limit for delta x to zero, then eg of delta x goes to zero. Yeah, eg was a continuous function with the value 0 for delta x equals 0. Also, if u changes, then y also changes. Yeah, So y is depending on f u, and when u changes, then we face a change in y value. Well, what's the change here? Well, the change here is the f prime in the value that u assumes for taking x equals to a, which is g of a. So f prime times g a times delta u, which is the linear, uh, the, 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 the change along the tangent line, plus, and now we get an epsilon function defined in terms of f, epsilon f times the change in u times delta u. And we do the same thing, we take out the common term delta u. So we remain, we get the term f prime g of a plus epsilon f delta u times delta u. And recall that this function epsilon f has the following property that when delta u goes to zero, then ef of delta u goes to zero. Okay. But now we get two things. We get delta y expressed in changes delta u, and we get delta u expressed in terms of delta x. Now substitute the first line, delta u, substitute in, in the formulation of delta y. Then what we obtain is a square bracket f prime g of a plus e f delta u. And we're going to replace delta u by the thing that is given before, so square bracket g prime a plus epsilon g and delta x. Times, times delta x. So now for delta 
x unequal to 0, we may divide the left-hand side and the right-hand side by delta x. Yeah, let's do so. On the left-hand side, we get delta y divided by delta x equals a product of two terms in the square bracket. So f prime g of a plus a epsilon f delta u times g prime a plus epsilon g of delta x. which is this one. Now suppose we let delta x close in on zero. What happens? What happens if we look at the terms in this expression? First of all, if delta x goes to zero, then we see that eg of delta x goes to zero. Right? This was the property of this function eg, that it's continuous in delta x, and also in zero, and in zero it takes on the value zero. So if delta u goes to zero when delta x goes to zero, right? So g is a continuous function. Now u is g of x. So when changes in x are small, then changes in u are small. So delta u goes to zero. So this also means that e f epsilon f in evaluated in delta u for delta u going to zero, that this term also in goes to zero. So if we look on the on the terms, the product of terms on the right hand side, then this goes to for delta x going to zero. And this has as a limit f prime g of a plus 0 times the g prime plus 0. And this is just a product of the derivatives. Okay, but now we're there, right? So we see that if we take the limit of delta y divided by delta x for delta x going to 0, that this equal, that, that the limit exists. So this is the product f prime g of a times g prime of a. But when this limit exists, it's also y prime of a. It's the derivative of the function y evaluated in a. And since y is the composite function f through g, then we see that the derivative of the composite function f through g evaluated in a is the product of f prime g of a and g prime a. So this completes the proof of the chain rule.